Well hello once again all my vintage dirt bike loving YouTubers and a warm welcome back to my classic dirt bike TV channel. Now I hope I find you all safe and well and looking forward to the day that we can all get back on our old vintage dirt bikes and enjoy our racing once more. Now because I am also on lockdown and unable to produce new material for my uh, viewers I've been raiding my archives once again and have unearthed a few more classic machines found in the paddocks during 2019. Now my first featured bike belongs to Donnie Bruce and this is his very nice JBR 500 Honda. Now this is just one of the many bikes in Donnie's collection as he does race a succession of different machines at race events as uh, he is very lucky in that respect really having different bikes to use on every other weekend. Now these JBRs of course are powered by this very successful Honda XR500 motor which is uh, fitted into these uh, beautifully sculptured chrome plated frames. Now I'm not 100% sure but I know that many of these JBR frames are made by uh, Mark Janik of Mojo Motorcycles. Now whether this is a Mark Janik frame I'm not uh, too sure but that big XR500 four stroke lump certainly looks the part sitting in this frame. Now I've featured machines of Donnie's on my YouTube channel previously and you may remember his Michael Kawasaki hybrid that I featured with the 81 Michael frame and that big uh, huge KX Kawasaki two stroke motor but these JBR Hondas are certainly uh, very quick bikes if you get the right rider on board and this example of Donnie's is a very nice example of one of these JBR 500 Hondas now next up we have John Baird's 1981 250 Michael Twin Shocker. Now I actually captured this bike at a Scottish Twin Shock race event in October in Glenfarg in Perthshire. Now this lovely low Scottish autumn sunshine was uh, very bright at 7 o'clock in the morning so it did add to the photography aspects uh, when I started filming this particular bike. But it did look superb in this uh, lovely autumn uh, sunshine. And these little uh, 250 Michael reed valve motors were excellent little engines as long as you kept on top of the maintenance issues uh, with regards to the motor. Now the Michael brakes were decent for 1981. Of course, uh, these were still the old-fashioned uh, drum brakes for that year. Now, these brakes wouldn't make the bike stand on its head if you pulled hard on the brake lever, but they were uh, still adequate if you needed to check your speed into a turn. Now, maybe these 250s weren't as quick as the uh, big brother of this bike, the Mighty 490, but they were still decent uh, weekend race machines. But with regards to the engine, if you just kept on top of any maintenance issues that propped up from time to time, changed the gearbox oil regularly and kept your eye on the primary chain, then normally these would give good service and they were damn quick for a 250. Now it looks like John's fitted a nice pair of billet gold anodized triple clamps to his particular 250. But these 250 Michaels are hugely popular bikes with the Twin Shock and Classic racers and although this is only a 250 it's still a very competitive machine and it looks absolutely gorgeous in this uh, very low Scottish uh, autumn morning sunshine. Now also attending the same event was Brian Allardyce with his very nice 1982 430 CR Husk Varna. Now regular viewers to my channel may recognise this bike as its restoration 
was showcased on my channel a few years back. Now the bike was basically built from two husky junkers and Brian used the frame from one bike and the motor from another to finish off with this machine. Now of course when it was finished it was a concourse winner and could easily have been kept as a show bike but as you can see here the bike is being used as a race machine and is already showing some battle scars from previous racing encounters. But these 430 motors were just awesome and were never short of available power when you needed it and uh, Brian on the day was using this as his number one race bike and uh, had his old fateful 490 Maiko sitting in the back of his van should he require it. But Brian did make a good job of building this bike and to date it served him well with virtually no mechanical issues to report. But then again, that's more than likely down to Brian's bike building skills when he initially put the machine together. But certainly a bike for the open class racers, these big 430 Husk Varners, but uh, put the right rider in the driving seat of one of these uh, machines and they could take on just about anything on the racetrack. Okay, next up we have a couple of quite nice YZ 250 Yamahas belonging to Callum Kilgower. Well, actually the number 289 bike is Callum's and I think the other 189 numbered machine is his son's uh, race bike. Now this time uh, these bikes again were captured at a Scottish twin shot race meeting at Alloa on a very wet September afternoon and as I remember on that day everybody had to get uh, towed into the field by the tractor as the paddock was absolutely sodden. Now these 250 Yamahas again were uh, good bikes and because these were the 250s they were maybe not as potent or as quick as the 465 or even the 490 Pinger but as far as a good club racer's bike go these were perfect for racing at these uh, kind of twin shot meetings. Now you're probably wondering how a monoshock YZ Yamaha can race at a twin shot meeting well it's basically because that these bikes still have the air-cooled motor with the drum brakes front and rear and these are eligible to race at uh, Scottish uh, twin shock events purely because of that particular rule. But these are a very nice pair of YZ250 Yamahas from Callum Kilgower. Now next up it's uh, Craig Smith's 400 Michael. Now, uh, naturally not a fully original 81 Maiko as Craig is just one of these riders who are always chopping and changing things on his bike and uh, he's forever experimenting with various bits and pieces to try and get his bike to go faster and handle better. But don't be fooled by this bike's scruffy looks. This machine regularly finishes in the top two or three of the twin shock open class and when Craig slings his leg over this bike to take to the track you're going to have to up your game if you want to get in front of this black bomber. Now Craig has come so close to winning the Scottish Twin Shock Championship in the last 10 years riding this bike and I think he's finished runner up in about the same amount of times but uh, I think only Paul Chiappa who's won the title about 16 times has kept him from that prize but as I said uh, despite its scruffy looks this 400 Michael can still shift. But with regards to the year of the bike uh, I'm unsure because uh, as I said Craig is always changing frames and changing engines and suspension systems just to try and get that little bit more of an edge on uh, his uh, racing rivals but uh, this is still a very very quick bike if you uh, get a chance to ever 
see it on the track. So there you have it, that's uh, Craig Smith's quite nice looking, albeit a bit tatty, uh, 400 Michael. Now next on the list is uh, Jimmy Harley's 1989 RM125 Suzuki Slingshot. Now these little 125 smokers were again quite quick machines for 1989 and uh, for just a 125 it was uh, very fast from way down and had good mid-range power but uh, riders say that this uh, little bike lacked anything at the top end. But other riders say that these 89 RM125s were uh, not without their problems as the motor had a tendency to stop when you didn't want it to and uh, crank failures and even piston issues were common on this uh, small bike. But 99% of this bike was redesigned and brand new for 1989 although the engine wasn't uh, the best. Now Suzuki's interpretation of a power valve was their AETC or Automatic Exhaust Timing Control. Now it seemed that every motocross manufacturer in the late 1980s had their own version of a power valve system and this AETC was uh, Suzuki's uh, interpretation. Now these bikes were fueled by a 35mm Makuni slingshot carburetor through a case uh, reed valve. But don't get me wrong here, it was still a decent handling little bike but it was uh, more of a fun bike than a serious title contender and if you were a weekend club racer and were looking for a nippy 125 then this was uh, definitely the bike for you. Although if you were really serious about your racing and wanted results then uh, look somewhere else because uh, after the motor's initial burst off the line this little 125 engine just ran out of puff. So that's just a brief look at Jimmy Harley's 1989 RM125 Suzuki. Now this is a bike I spotted at this very same event. Now I think it's an 82YZ250 Yamaha although uh, of course I wait to be corrected on that particular point. But uh, this is not a machine that you see very often at these kind of twin shock events and again it's another quite rare machine for me as this is possibly the first early water-cooled YZ I've seen in the flesh, uh, so to speak. Now I'm sure you don't need me to tell you about these YZ250 water-cooled Yamaha engines these were powerful two-stroke power plants in their day and if I remember Yamaha used a twin-cylinder variation of this motor on their hugely successful uh, LC RD250 and RD350 road bikes. Now these Yamaha 250 motors were fitted with the famous YPVS power valve or Yamaha's power valve system to give it its uh, full title. Basically it was just a little valve that altered the height of the exhaust port which was uh, reputed to then change the engine's power delivery right across the motor's rev range. And the bike's radiator there tucked nicely behind that front number plate. But overall these were a very good strong two-stroke motor and as I mentioned uh, not a bike that you see readily at scrambles events, but uh, if you were to head to a classic or vintage road race meeting, you would certainly see plenty of these YPVS water-cooled engines in a variation of road race bikes. Now I never actually spoke to the owner of the bike and never got his name, but uh, this example appears to have all the correct parts from the early 1980s and it's still in good original condition. Plastic fuel tank of course uh, every manufacturer in the land at this time was using plastic for their motocross machines. But just as an added bonus on this particular clip we can maybe have a listen to what this bike actually sounds like.
Next up, another very rare machine from the 2019 Revival Scramble, and this time it's Gary Wars, very nice and rare, 1974 Ossa Phantom, 250. Now for me personally, this was one of the very first Ossa Phantoms I'd actually seen at a classic Scramble event. Okay, I've seen a few in magazines and in private collections and even in museums, but to actually see one of these bikes in the flesh and racing on a track is an extremely rare event because you just don't see them. But this particular bike of Gary's is an almost original example of one of these lovely Spanish-made osses, and I think the only non-original part on Gary's bike here are the rear shocks which uh, look like they have been changed for a set of more modern Falcon units. But then again you've got to expect that considering the age of this bike is now coming up to 46 years old. Although back in their day these were very good little machines and hugely popular in Europe and in the UK in the 1970s and riders who owned and raced these machines back in the day still sing the praises of these fantastic little awesome bikes. So there you have it, that's Gary Wars' uh, lovely 1974 Ossa Phantom 250. Now this is a bike that needs no introduction whatsoever and will be instantly recognisable to Husqvarna fans the world over. This is Nathan Jones's 400 cross Husqvarna. Now almost certainly these are one of the more popular Husqvarnas and Nathan's example here looks in good original condition for one of these uh, iconic machines. Now these bikes were of course made up to legendary status by Hollywood film star Steve McQueen who boosted the sales of these iconic bikes when he rode a similar machine to this in the epic documentary film On Any Sunday. But that particular film wasn't just a stunt for Steve. Uh, he genuinely loved riding these 400 cross bikes and was reputed to have a few examples of this model in his very own private collection. Now as you've no doubt gathered, Nathan's example is not a fully original bike, as it does have a few non-standard parts uh, fitted on it, including replacement shocks, different handlebars, and uh, possibly even a replacement uh, seat. But that takes nothing away from what still is a very nice example of one of these 400 cross huskies, and what's more, Nathan is still using his particular 400 cross on the racetrack. But then again, it's thanks to the likes of Nathan who is keeping his 400 Cross uh, as a race bike and not as a museum piece uh, and uh, still keeping alive these uh, quite iconic machines and letting us all see these bikes in action on the track where they belong. But yet again, another fine example of one of these Swedish-made machines. That's Nathan Jones's 400 Cross Husqvarna. Now, just to finish off this featured video, we're going to take a look at Peter Hollinshead's original 1979 500 four-valve CCM. Now you've more than likely heard me on previous CCM videos banging on about how you never ever see an original CCM from the 1970s. Well now you're looking at one. Now Peter's bike is an original 1979 500 with the 4 valve motor and the even rarer 4 speed gearbox. Now every part on this machine with the exception of a new rear tyre is all from 1979 and that includes the plastics, the seat and the rear shocks. Now admittedly the bike may not be much to look at but believe me this is a very rare animal indeed and more than likely worth a very tidy sum of money because of its rarity. Although uh, maybe Peter could have spent a few more pounds 
on the numbers on the side panels, although <laughs> although it does look like this was uh, a bit of a last minute rush to get the bike on the track. Now the bike is a very rare British classic and Peter tells me that this is just one of the many CCM bikes that he has in his collection. So uh, maybe it might be worth my while uh, paying him a visit once all this uh, COVID-19 stuff is out of the way. Now the motor is a 4 valve 500 with, as I said before, the quite rare 4 speed gearbox fitted. But it's still nice to see one of these old CCMs in unrestored condition with all its 1970s goodies still attached. And uh, this will give you a little insight into what these may have looked like when Alan Clues was building them in his Bolton factory back in the day. But it's another superb old British classic to finish off this video and I hope you've enjoyed some of the other vintage iron classics contained in this uh, latest video posting. So once again, thanks for watching my Classic Dirt Bike TV channel and stay safe until we feature more vintage machines right here on Classic Dirt Bike TV. This video was brought to you in association with Wealthsport, the world's number one supplier for all your off-road and leisure sportswear. Just visit their online website for more information.